On today's episode, we'll be taking a look around at some notable Dallas Stars prospects and talk about new additions and guys we've known about for quite some time, really just covering our bases on players we should be excited about for the future of Dallas Stars hockey. All of that and more coming up on this Wednesday episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day, I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Wednesday, March 22nd. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more and visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. And I know by the the Dallas Stars, by the time you're hearing this, likely finished their matchup with the Seattle Kraken, uh, or maybe still playing, depends on when this comes out, but As I said on yesterday's episode, due to travel for work and things of that nature, while I was able to watch the game, uh, this episode, we will not be covering that game. That will be coming out later, where we'll cover the game against the Kraken and look ahead to the upcoming game now against the Pittsburgh Penguins. But today, I want to dive in and talk about some Dallas Stars prospects. It's been a while since we've done a check-in and, you know, looked at some of the up-and-coming players throughout the Dallas Stars organization. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. Thank you guys for the continued support, and hopefully you enjoy today's episode as we kick things off with a new member of the Dallas Stars organization, a new prospect, but one that we should be very excited about, a guy that the Stars signed to an entry-level contract over the weekend. The Dallas Stars announced that they signed 20-year-old forward Chase Wheatcroft to an entry-level deal. Chase Wheatcroft currently plays for the Prince George Cougars of the WHL, and this has the potential to be another phenomenal steal for the Dallas Stars. It looks like Wyatt Johnston has already turned into a steal, a guy who maybe could have gone in the top 10 of the 2021 NHL draft. He's now a 20-goal scorer in his rookie year at 19 years old. Uh, Logan Stankoven looks like he has the potential to be labeled a steal as well. And now the Dallas Stars have picked up another promising young player. Currently in the Western Hockey League, uh, Wheatcroft has been on a tear. He was recently named the Player of the Month for the month of February in the WHL, where he scored 12 goals, racked up 16 assists, totaling 28 points in total. He is currently second in the WHL in points at 105, only behind some guy named Connor Bedard, uh, who has 142 and is locked to be the first overall pick in the 2023 NHL draft. Wheatcroft is also the league leader in power play goals with 22 and has more total points than our very own Logan Stankoven, who has 93. And we'll talk about Stankoven a little bit later on in today's episode. But this was a move that really just kind of came out of nowhere on a Saturday, a Dallas Stars game day. And then they just announced it kind of Saturday afternoon that they've picked up this prospect who has been killing it. I mean, to be second in scoring in the WHL is no small feat. And of course, to only be trailing Connor Bedard, who seems to be a generational talent. Uh, Again, nothing to scoff at. And Wheatcroft, like I said, has been on a heater as of late with points in 12 of his last 13 games. Uh, In that stretch, he had two four-point games and a five-point game. And I'm not really sure how this happened, but he has gone undrafted uh, through two years of WHL play where he could have been drafted in the National Hockey League drafts. And I'm sure part of it has to do with the fact that there was the pandemic. And I think that that's, you know, some of the reason why players like Johnston and Stankoven fell down the draft boards and maybe their stock lessened because there weren't as many playing opportunities. Leagues were getting shut down, things of that nature. So I'm sure that that factors into Wheatcroft's lack of being drafted somehow. But um, again, it looks like this is an incredibly talented young man with plenty of upside who just has been untouched by the NHL world until now. And it looks like this is another potential steal, like I said, from Jim Neal and the Stars front office. And you throw his name into the hat 
with plenty of other young, talented players. Wyatt Johnston, who already has shown that he belongs at the NHL level. Logan Stankoven, uh, who I believe will be with the team next season. Maverick Bork, who's playing with the American Hockey League Texas Stars. We'll talk a little bit more about him later. And so many others and mixed in uh, with you know, a veteran leadership group of by the time he probably gets to the NHL, I mean, Jason Robertson, Rope Hintz, uh, Miro Haskinen really truly will be the faces of the team if they aren't so already. Uh, an incredible pickup, it seems, for the Stars and a guy that I am very excited about. Uh, and he brings a decent amount of size. He's six feet two, uh, not the heaviest player, but still a guy that seems to score very well. I was able to find some highlights on YouTube of his play in the WHL. He scores very effectively from the slot. Uh, has a, a pretty decent slap shot, it seems, a nice one-timer, and really, I mean, obviously has no trouble scoring this season with 105 points, and a guy who you can just add to the arsenal of exciting offensive talent within this organization, and this contract for him begins next season. So this isn't just, a, oh, well, he's going to be a star's prospect, but he still has a few more years of junior hockey left. He's eligible to join the Dallas Stars organization either at the AHL or NHL level this next season. So wherever the Dallas Stars best see him fit, he'll be put there. So I imagine he's going to be a big name to follow during training camp over the summer, and a guy that if the Stars see fit, they could put him on the NHL roster depending on what the team looks like, uh, what departures there are in the offseason, either through free agency or trades. I, I don't necessarily know if it's going to happen. I, I really, at this time, probably didn't think that White Johnston would be on the roster. At least, you know, maybe he'd get hit test out, but he might have been sent back down. So you never really know with guys like this that have a ton of upside in junior hockey, whether or not they can make that jump as quick as Johnston. Or I think there's a good chance that we could see Wheatcroft play a season with the Texas Stars in Cedar Park before officially making that jump to the NHL. But that's kind of the sweet spot, uh, the sweet part, rather, of all of this is the Stars now have a guy, again, with a, a ton of upside, a guy worth getting excited about. But we don't have to wait as long to see him truly a part of this organization. I mean, I feel like there's a good chance, if I were to guess right now, the AHL, but I'd love to be proven wrong, and I'd love to see him make a push for an NHL roster spot in the preseason. And again, I think that this just brings out the competition, which, of course, this I'm you know somewhat getting ahead of myself here. The offseason and training camp is a long ways away, but it was something we harped on time and time again last year during the summer and the early fall is that the more guys that are fighting for roster spots, the better because that competition brings out the best in everyone. So that way you feel like you truly are getting the best available players for your team at both levels. And so I, I'm excited to add a guy like Wheatcroft to the mix and see how he competes against some of the younger guys on the team that are going to be battling for NHL roster spots, including guys like Logan Stankoven, who we're going to talk about in just a minute. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick break and say thank you to some of our sponsors. Today's episode of Locked On Stars is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. The NCAA tournament is heating up and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. I want to thank you again for making the Locked On Stars podcast your first listen of the day moving on talking about a different batch of dallas stars prospects moving on to a different city different organization if you will within the western hockey league the dallas stars and their fans have been anxiously anticipating the arrival of one and now possibly even two members of the kamloops blazers i'm of course talking about logan stankoven and uh, who was drafted in the 2021 NHL draft in the second round by the Stars, and Matthew Simonoff, who was taken 179th overall in the 2022 draft. Both of these players are having incredible seasons with the Blazers. Both of them are top two in team scoring. Stan Coven with 93 points, and Matthew Simonoff in second 
with 81. Simonov has really kind of come out of nowhere, but it's certainly a welcome surprise. This was a player that uh, we discussed a little bit around draft time last year. Uh, there was that episode that we did with Tony Ferrari uh, talking about different pieces that the Stars had picked up in the draft. And uh, he had mentioned and a few others as well that Simonov certainly did have some upside and that he, he could really be considered a steal, a, a true steal as a guy who was taken in the last round of the draft. He's a high scorer and, and again, is another guy who provides upside. We don't really know how much of his game will translate to the NHL like we believe that a guy like Stan Coven's will. But these numbers are very promising for a guy that the Stars were able to get near the back end of the draft. And plenty of fans are already starting to, again, anticipate and daydream, it seems, about the addition of Stan Coven, especially to this Dallas Stars roster and trying to figure out where he could best fit into the lineup. And rightfully so. Not only is he lighting it up with the Kamloops Blazers this season, we saw him and Team Canada dominate the World Juniors. Of course, Connor Bedard kind of not necessarily stole the spotlight because I think he's earned the spotlight given his talent. But if Bedard doesn't take place or participate rather in that tournament, I think a lot of the NHL world and hockey world in general would be talking about Logan Stankoven, who, who maybe was the second best player in that tournament. And certainly, in my opinion, the second best player on that Canadian team, which was absolutely loaded uh, with future NHL talent. Uh, unbelievable to see some of the players on that team and Stan Coven amongst the best and, and even myself. And I, I, we talked about this just the other day when we discussed the, you know, White Johnston and making the case for him to be a Calder Trophy finalist. There's the idea of maybe we could see a line next season featuring the Stars captain, Jamie Benn, Wyatt Johnston, and then maybe Logan Stankoven. Again, it's going to depend on what happens in the offseason, what players we see depart in free agency, if players get traded, uh, and you know what other guys are going to be leaving and exiting, uh, leaving, exiting, and entering into the Stars organization. There's a lot of different moving pieces, but even if it's not Jamie Benn, I mean, maybe we could see a guy like Stankoven play alongside Tyler Sagan. I know that he's kind of found some new life with Max Domi, and Mason Marchment was starting to play well before he was injured. And maybe, you know, you add in a guy like Stan Coven who has that youthfulness like Wyatt Johnston brings to the table. And you put both of those guys together. And I think that there could be some magic there. And then maybe you keep Max Domi on that line. I certainly would like to see the Stars hold on to Max Domi, but that's a different discussion for a different day. I think the possibilities, though, with Stan Coven are truly endless because he can slot in at the center role, which the Stars typically have some really good centers. They have, you know, Rope Hintz. They have Tyler Sagan. You add Stan Coven to that mix, Wyatt Johnston. But then, you know, you could have Max Domi play in the centering role and have Sagan and Stan Coven out on the wings. And I think that, that could be a really lethal trio. And, and I mean, the possibilities, again, just seem endless with a kid like Logan Stankoven, who has so much potential and so much upside. And again, uh, just an absolute steal in the second round of the 2021 draft. And I feel like the development and what we've seen from Wyatt Johnson this season is a great sign for what could be coming with these younger players, whether it is Simonoff, Stankoven, uh, or Wheatcroft too. I mean, there's so many different young players in this organization that are doing fine in their own right, rather with their junior clubs, or with the Texas Stars down in Cedar Park. But obviously, uh, there are signs that show that there is the proper development you know, being made at the NHL level, too. It's not necessarily easy to go straight from junior hockey to the NHL. Some guys, it obviously is very easy, and Wyatt Johnston is an example of that. I think he had the skill and the work ethic to make his game work at the highest professional level, but I think there also has to be some credit given to the Stars coaching staff the development staff there and making players like Wyatt Johnston look the way they do night in and night out on the ice. And I believe that we can see the same things with Stan Coven and Simonoff if they're willing to put in that work like Wyatt Johnston has, uh, which given what they're able to do right now, I fully believe that they're already putting forward and putting in that work and going to be elated to get to join a roster as talented as the one that the Dallas Stars have at this moment. We're going to take one more quick break, and when we come back, we'll wrap things up and go through some rapid-fire prospects. We'll kind of uh, round things out, talking about three different guys that I think are worth getting excited about and having some pretty solid seasons with their respective teams. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. No matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed, because Indeed is the hiring partner 
where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. And Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Indeed partners with you on every step of the hiring process. Find great talent through time-saving tools like Indeed Instant Match, assessments, and virtual interviews. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. All right, everybody, we are closing out today's episode of Locked on Stars. A little bit of a shorter episode today, but still an exciting one as we're talking about NHL potential players for the Stars organization, prospects that are worth getting excited about. We've talked about the newest edition in Chase Wheatcroft. We've headed to the Kamloops Blazers organization uh, and talked about Logan Stankoven and Matthew Simonoff. And there's a few other players worth getting excited about as well, both playing in junior hockey and the Canadian Hockey League, as well as even here in the state of Texas in the AHL. And I want to start things off in the OHL, the Ontario Hockey League, with Francesco Arcuri, uh, a center for the Kitchener Rangers. He is lighting up the Ontario Hockey League. He is 10th in the OHL and points at 87. This is a guy that people have labeled uh, or given the nickname Baby Robo to, basically saying he's a younger version of Jason Robertson, and he's in the Stars organization, and he has been an offensive juggernaut this season. Third in the OHL in goals at 46. Third in the OHL in power play goals at 18. This guy is a scoring machine, and yet again, another talented young center in this Stars organization, a player that I feel like has kind of flown under the radar with how many you know, big offensive names have come through your Johnstons, your Stan Covens, your Borks. But Francesco Arcuri is right there with those guys. And he was, you know, traded this season in the OHL. And I feel like that's a testament to his talent. Some teams in the OHL looking to make deep postseason runs. And with an offensive weapon like this, it's hard to doubt that a team would not be effective offensively with uh, Arcuri's services at their disposal. Looks like he's on pace to be near or above a 50 goal season dominant on the power play baby robo coming to dallas potentially sometime in the next few years and then shifting even to the other side of the ice on defense a guy we like to talk about here christian Cairo, a defenseman for the serena sting leading the way in the ohl for defensemen second in the league in points for demon at 73 second in power play assist for defensemen at 26 this is a guy who I know we even made the comparisons during the draft, but has that John Klingberg potential, like prime John Klingberg, where he is driving things offensively. He's quarterbacking power plays. He's making things happen from the blue line. Another young rising defenseman on the rise through the organization. Of course, the biggest criticism with him is he does need to work on that defense. He's a little bit undersized in terms of defensemen. Uh, He has, you know, some offensive upside like Klingberg, but he has more of that Niels Lundqvist build where he's not the biggest guy on the ice, but he can still be an effective player. And I think that his ability to play defense is something that will just come with time and proper coaching and development, which again, the stars seem to have some good coaching and pieces in place for that development. And even if you're wondering, well, where where are the big bruising enforcer type defensemen going to come? You can look at Aline Bichel, uh, who also, t- you know, got some stock, Uh, at the World Juniors a while back. Another guy worth getting excited about, the Stars' first-round pick in the 2022 draft. Some good defensemen working their way up the ranks in junior hockey and eventually into the Stars' organization. And that includes even guys like Maverick Bork, a center for the Texas Stars, the Stars' first-round pick in the 2020 draft. Bork had a little bit of a rough start in the AHL, but he has come a long way and had a pretty nice season for his first go around in quote unquote real professional hockey 12 goals 21 assists 33 points in total at the time of recording this and he's of course looking to be a key piece for the texas stars as they look to make a deep run in the ahl postseason sitting near the top of their respective division just like their nhl counterpart in the dallas stars and maverick bork is another guy who i think has flown under the radar as of late because he's seemingly been leapfrog in anticipation by Wyatt Johnston and Logan Stankoven. But I think uh, with continued development and and with proper coaching, he's going to come along and be a very nice middle six type player 
Uh, and the stars definitely could not complain about that, especially uh, here in the early goings of his career where they might could get some pretty solid production at not too big of a, of a price tag. And I think even him getting this playoff experience in the AHL is going to be good for him in the long term. I know the AHL playoffs, not quite the same as the NHL postseason, but still any postseason experience is good. It, it makes you appreciate uh, the, the work that gets put in and, and getting the opportunity to win a championship with the team that you've been so close to all season is a great and unique opportunity and so i'm excited to see the continued development of maverick bork i know things didn't start off great but it's a testament to some guys just take longer to develop and it takes some guys a, a little bit longer to get to where they need to be and the adjustments of playing in junior hockey to the professional league it, it can be a jump sometimes and so we can't always expect these guys to have these quick turnarounds and have those smooth and seemingly seamless transitions like white johnson i think maverick bork from everything i can see and everything i understand there's still plenty uh, to be excited about with his play as it pertains to the Texas Stars and hopefully a few years down the line, the Dallas Stars. But that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Let me know in the YouTube comments down below who I missed. Uh, we only have a finite amount of time on this podcast each day, so I know I missed some big-name prospects in the Stars organization, guys that are worth getting excited about. Let me know who you are most excited for down in the comments down below here on YouTube, or let me know on Twitter at Dane Double underscore Lewis or the podcast name at Locked On Stars. Thank you guys for tuning in, for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. We will be back tomorrow. I'll actually be talking about the Stars game against the Kraken. That has already taken place, likely by the time you're hearing this, and then we'll be getting prepared for Thursday night's game against the Pittsburgh Penguins. But I hope you guys have a great Wednesday. And we'll see you back here tomorrow.